Can I live, son? It's recording. Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. Brian, where are you at? Hey, there's Brian. It's not. It's it's seven fifty nine. We're about to go. We're starting off thirty seconds early. Because guys are always early. Because guys yeah. are always early. <laughs> Yes, they are. The guys are always early, aren't they? <laughs> All right. Jane, tell us when it's 8 o'clock. Okay, we can really the, count, the countdown is happening. The countdown is happening. I don't know how to <laughs> count down when I only see 7.59. So I'm, Upper right-hand corner of the screen, it should be counting down. Oh, did that go away? Where did it? Does that mean it's 8 o'clock? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start. No, it's 7.59. It's 7.59. 4, 3, 2, one, okay, two, now we can boom. start. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock on tonight? the dot. What is tonight? Tonight is Plant Bros. Part two. two. Part, Part two. two. <laughs> um, my name's Brian Hart, and I'm John Fitzgerald. Uh, we are the Plant Bros. Our second... Back by popular demand. Back by popular demand. I think demand. what two people? Yeah, the, all two people emailed <laughs> us and said we'd like to see Plant Bros again. Thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and dad, sorry. So, uh, so we got together to make sure that the men in your life, you didn't have any excuses to be able to say, oh, I don't like that plant-based food. You know, it doesn't fill me up. It doesn't stick to your ribs. And so that's what this is all about is coming up with some recipes for you to use with your spouse and, or if you're uh, the man in the house, then for something for you to cook yourself. But uh, I say, yeah. I say, get the man involved. Why not? We should be cooking. I cook. I you cook. cook. I cook. You're a great cook. No, and you're a great cook. Yeah, my dog loves my food. <laughs> <laughs> so first off, before we start, I want to make sure we we address uh, the elephant in the room, which is the fact that you know this idea of manly food, and I just want you to know that we realize that gender is something that's a, a spectrum. Um, and so people who identify as a man or a woman, uh, we know that that's evolving. And uh, we just want to make sure we real we let you know that we realize that. And so what we're doing is really thinking of, of like traditional male values and trying to attract more men to the plant-based side of eating. Uh, a recent statistic I read, well, first of all, uh, you probably all know that um, that Americans eat the most meat per capita of anybody in the world. And to add to more of that, um, men eat 67% more meat than women um, in some of the research that I've looked at. So it's really not just an American problem, it's an American male problem. <laughs> and we, could, we have a whole presentation on getting the men you love off of meat and why men are so obsessed with meat. Um, we can get into that on another presentation, but this is really about winning over the, the manly people in your life uh, and trying to get them to eat more healthily. And uh, I don't know, John, when did you go plant-based? I went plant-based in 2014. I've uh, got a long family history of heart disease on my dad's side and uh, had a little heart scare, but age 49, my grandfather died at 49 from a heart attack. So uh, it scared me enough to uh, start figuring out if there wasn't something different that I should be doing. And I found uh, the book by Rip Esselstyn and, and Dr. Esselstyn and, and read both of them cover to cover, which is unusual for me. I'm not really a book reader, but it just started to make so much sense. Right. Yeah. And, and it just it just clicked. And then it was like, OK, great. Now, how do I do this? Yeah. Right. And at that time, Jane and, and her mom didn't have their YouTube. They, yeah. I didn't know about the whole engine to immersion. I didn't know any of that. I just saw the book, had the recipes. I'm like, all right, I got to figure this out. And there's nothing less manly than dying. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> you definitely want to be around. That's not manly at all to die, to die at age 50, which, uh, you know, it's not uncommon, obviously, in this country to have uh, people, especially men, um, sudden heart attacks, sudden cardiac events in their 50s. Yeah. Um, and we, we have family friends who, uh, you know, very few males in their family live past the age of 60. Yeah. And so that's really, really sad. So let's dive right into it. Speaking so, of living, you've got yeah. people here following from Texas, from Florida. Right, we've got people from, from Texas, Pittsburgh, Florida, Pittsburgh, Ohio, and beyond. All right. So let me, I just want to say, so like. Reno! I, sorry, <laughs> Reno just chimed in. Reno. <laughs> Brian, I don't know about you, but anytime I talk about eating this way to any of my, my guy friends, their first question is, I can't eat twigs and sticks right, right? I can't eat twigs, can't eat twigs and, and sticks, sticks yeah, and, we've heard it all right and and the food's not tasty and bother so i think i think the recipes we picked tonight are going to put that all to bed i totally agree so, so i'm start we're starting off with an old-time favorite comfort food comfort food mac and cash is going to be our first recipe and then you're doing what 
I am doing ch checking, checking nuggets. No chicken, checking nuggets. And then we're going to do uh, portobello burger, which is one of my favorites. So again, if you got a guy in your life that's saying, eh, I don't like that stuff, this is an amazing, <laughs> amazing uh, alternative to like a beef burger. And then we're finishing up with. We are finishing up with some damn good cookies. Excellent. Damn good cookies. And they don't even need to be cooked, right? They don't even need to be cooked. We can eat them right out of the blender. You call um, damn good rice? Rice. There yeah. you go. Damn good rice. And so I want you all to know that that um, these recipes tonight, we really tried to find things that were simple. So um, mm -hmm. people are going to probably email me tomorrow and say, what about the recipes? What about the recipes? I will send out in the follow-up email whatever I can, whatever we're allowed to share just because of the contracts with the cookbooks. Um, I will send out what I can, but just know we tried to keep it really simple. Something that even a guy who's all thumbs in the kitchen <laughs> could actually make himself. So again, trying to simplify it, not making it too complex. As soon as you get these recipes that are asking for things like saffron and all these bizarre <laughs> things that you have to go to the uh, crazy uh, store on the other side of town to get, we're not about that. We're about trying to make it painfully simple. And most guys are cheap and saffron's most guys are, expensive. Exactly. <laughs> most guys are really cheap. All right. So let's go ahead and start off with mac and cash, an old favorite mm. to replace macaroni and cheese. And so um, I've got to look at the recipe, of course, because I can't remember all the details. <laughs> but um, all you really need are a handful of ingredients and a food processor and an oven, and you'll crank it out really quickly. So what I'm going to do is I pre-cooked a, uh, a bunch of whole wheat pasta. Remember, you want it to be whole grain pasta. We want to get away from those white uh, grains that have been stripped of all their amazing fiber. So we got that's it. my favorite type of pasta. Yeah, me too. The curl and I didn't do macaroni. I did. I like the curly cues. What's it called? A Ro rotini. Rotini. Well, I like the rotini. So I've got rotini here that I pre-cooked. So it just needs to be, you know, al dente. Just make it. Uh, Is it hard to cook pasta? Oh pasta my. not hard to cook. <laughs> yeah, if you can't cook pasta, then. That's a separate conversation we should probably Then you'll have. love the damn good cookies. <laughs> you'll love the damn good cookies. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And so then um, I also sauteed an onion before uh, we got started tonight in the name of time. So you didn't have to watch me saute an onion. So those that's the only thing I've done. And now we're just going to start assembling ingredients. And, and for the guys in the audience, saute means cook. Saute so. just means cook in a pan. Right. Uh, we're not using any oil, of course. Right. Um, as you know, those of you who follow Dr. Esselstyn, I just threw the onion in the pan and surprise, it cooked. <laughs> I didn't even have to oil everything up. So now what we're making is the cashew um, sauce, the stuff we're going to mm. mix in there, like the cheese sauce. And so I, what I did was I soaked a half a cup of cashews, and it kind of, uh, so when they soak up the water, they get a little bigger. So that looks like more than a half a cup. So I'm just going to dump that into the food processor. Then I've got... Um, let's see how many, uh, about a half a cup of roasted red peppers. I bought these at the store, a jarred roasted red peppers. Make sure they're packed in water, not in any sort of oil or anything. And I'm just going to dump those in there. And if you want to speed up the, uh, the cashew soaking process, use really hot water. That's exactly right. Yep. That's, that's what I did. I just pumped hot yep. water in there. All right. So now, um, lemon juice, it asks for a quarter cup of lemon juice. I just chopped a lemon in half. That's going to be good enough. Again guys we don't like it remember cooking is not an exact science baking and you know, if you're baking things that's an exact science cooking not so much we're Wait. going with about a quarter cup of lemon juice there we go good that's, enough oh I, yeah i think you got it good enough good yeah. enough now uh one and a half cups of oat milk now we just get the pacific foods oat milk make sure you read your labels when you're buying oat milk because a lot of oat milks these days will put oil in to, uh especially if it's being used for coffee so this one is one that does not however this is not the reduced sugar one we like the reduced sugar one we can't always find it um there's not added sugar but there's a, an emulsifier in here that makes it really really sweet so just know that um but there isn't any uh oil in it. That's really important. So I think it's, it's an enzyme, not the milk. It's an enzyme. Thank you. One and a half cups of what did I do? I oh, you know what? That sealed didn't oh, break. Oh, yeah, that sealed didn't didn't break all the way. Yeah. So I'm going to hold on to that and I'm going to get all the dry ingredients in first and I'm going to add it make sure because I want it with the right consistency. Now it's going to, uh, we're going to go with, um, geez, I 
can't wish I could see. <laughs> Three quarters of a cup of nutritional yeast. Again, it's cooking, not baking. Make Three it cheesy. quarters of a cup. <laughs> That's like half I a cup. I don't know. I was going to say. That was a half a cup. Yeah, I think, think you need a little more cheese in there. That was yeah. a half a cup. That was a half a cup. And remember, nutritional yeast, not brewer's yeast. <laughs> yeah, brewer's no, yeast will make that. a mess. Uh, nutritional yeast is just a. What, now, how would you describe nutritional yeast, Jane? What I, I always describe it as sort of a um, kind of a, a fish food. Well, well that doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, no. I was going to say. <laughs> well, but, uh, there you saying, go, fellas. If, guy, if guys won't buy saffron, where are guys going to buy nutritional yeast? <laughs> That's what they're saying. Okay. Where will they buy? Uh, it's at the, any grocery store. Most grocery stores sell it these days. Of course, Whole Foods does. Um, now we got a teaspoon of garlic powder, um, I tea love that, so teaspoon of onion. Palm, you palm your powder. <laughs> yeah, right. Teaspoon of onion powder. Sure, sure. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna leave that one alone. But yeah, yeah, just put that powder in there. We're good. What else you got? And that's got it. Kale? You got kale over there. What's that for? That's for the end. You'll see. Oh, that's special. That's special. So that's... now I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid, a little bit of the oat milk, okay. and I'll start grinding it up here, and then add a little more, get the consistency just right, but. Uh, you'll see it comes out nice and smooth. That looks amazing. I love, I love seeing the red pepper in there. I know. Yeah. It's like a red pepper sauce. Ah, uh, it's going to be so good. <laughs> Sorry to have you for watching. So now, so now, how often do you have this stuff? How often do you make mac and cash? Ooh, mac and cash. Kyle and I love it. Jane's not eating it these days because she's not eating gluten. So we'll sometimes use uh, rice uh, rice pasta for her. But when Jane goes out of town to travel and speak somewhere or something like that, then we often, uh, Kyle and I will make a big thing of it and either take the entire tray down in one night and or eat the next day. <laughs> so if you can see, it's just sort of this. Jane, can you switch the camera to the yeah. one close to me? Can you see that? It's really just looks like this sort of reddish. Can you show the texture like with a spoon so people see how thick it is? Yeah, yeah sure. sure. Just because you said you added this, you added the liquid at the end. What's the consistency you're looking for? Can you describe Ooh, look at that. Yeah, I think slightly I like I like chunky. It. Yeah, slightly chunky. It's like a slurry. I don't like it's not really a nice word. It doesn't sound very good. But it's, um, it's, but it's descriptive. Word. Descriptive. And so um, it's definitely uh, thinner than hummus. Oh yeah. So it's you know it's like a slurry, almost like a smoothie. How about that? Now, oh look at that. Now all I'm doing is dumping the whole thing on top of this box of pasta. So it's 16 ounces of pasta, and then I'm just gonna quickly mix it up a little bit. This is all. This is all it is. So simple. So Man, simple. And you'd be I don't amazed. Think you can make it simpler. I know. And the and the cashews are so good. If you are a heart patient, remember. Um, if you're a heart patient. Then um, I can clean that door. We have another one. You can scrape out some of that good sauce. Oh, there's still some easy. good sauce in there. Yeah, and it'll be easier for us to clean. Um, if you're a heart patient, you probably want to steer clear of the cashews. And uh, I'm told you can use cannelli bean, cannellini beans, but I'm uh, I've never actually made it that way. So just just know that. All right. So now I'm going to dump it into the baking tray. Make sure it's mixed pretty well. You know what would be nice on this? A little bit of breadcrumbs or something like that? Kind of give it a little Oh, breadcrumbs would be awesome. So this is what I tend to do is once the sauce is in there, then I take a piece of kale, you know, just a floppy piece of kale, strip it. Thank God. I, did, I thought you weren't going to strip it. You got those scissors out. I'm like, how is Brian not going to strip? And then just to add a little green, because we always want to get our leafy greens in for all kinds of reasons, not to mention, you know, our endothelial health, but also... Um, we want to improve our endothelial health so everything below the belt works. It's really important, really important. Guys, listen up. Important stuff. And I just clip it with scissors over the top, and then it mixes in the green. And then... That's perfect. I didn't scissor it very well, but... Jeez. I think it'll work. Right? I think it'll, I think, I think it'll work. I think it'll work. All right, so do you want to... Wait, your onions. onions. You want to put it in? Oh my God, I forgot to put my onions in. <laughs> that never happens to me. So just go ahead and stir them in, eh? Yeah, just stir them yeah, in. Yeah, how about that? Never done that before. I'll just stir them in. <laughs> See, we like to roll with it. I can't believe I left the onions out of the... Uh... You know, it's funny. I was, I was looking at those things. I'm like, when's he going to add the onions? When's he going to add the onions? That was terrible. <laughs> 
I'm sure it'll work out. I mean, it'll be it'll be actually be better probably because yeah. I, I sauteed those onions until they were a little bit black, which I love. They get a little they get caramelized. Yeah. All right, now I can show you, Jane. Can you? Yep. Camera shot. Top shot. Top shot. Now I'm gonna <laughs> plop. Shot, shot. I'm gonna plop this into the uh, into the oven and have it cook while John is working on his recipe, and then we'll come back to it at the end. Could you please describe? Um, do you have to cover that? Nope, you don't. You cover it. You bake it uh, without a cover so that it browns on the top. And I like to put it on a shelf, uh, the highest uh, in the oven. I try. I move the oven, up, the rack up, not to the total total top, but like just one below. And uh, so that the top gets a little crispy because that's awesome. Oh, yeah. No, it's got to get crispy. That's why I like the the little breadcrumbs on there. All right. All right. Here we go. Let's what's, see the how it what's the temperature again? 425 for 20 minutes. Tick tock, tick tock. Well, look at you. Way to not grab that with your bare hands. Yeah, that's right. That's not manly. <laughs> All right. All right, John. I'll clean up and then it's your turn. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Next up is crispy chicken nuggets. Not chicken, chicken nuggets. So, this is like, uh, this would be great for uh, a game if you're watching the game with your buddies and, and you guys think of all the different toppings. You can have uh, barbecue sauce, you can have, um, you can have barbecue sauce, you can have a mandarin sauce. You're going to have just plain mustard, whatever you want. It, it's so versatile. So I'm going to get this on here first. Oh, yeah. Other way. Other way. There you go. Is it clicked on? No, not yet. It, there this we is go. manly. That's not manly, John. You just got a man handle. Wow. Got a man handle. <laughs> Tough crowd. All right. So uh, first we need our chickpeas. Here we go. So uh, just a, a 15 ounce can of chickpeas is all you need. Now here's the key. Can't tell you how many times I make a recipe and it's, can I just tell you, we didn't mention this, but read through the recipe before you do it. Read all the way through. Because if you don't, you would miss the fact that you need to keep the liquid that's in this can, which is called aquafaba for those fancy people. And so you want to save that. So, Oops. Oh, it's in the can. All right, here we go. So I'm going to take the lid off, and I'm just going to drain the aquafaba into a bowl. Because we want to keep that liquid. You'll see why. There's a secret reason we're keeping this. All right. So then you just dump those in there. 15, again, a 15-ounce can of just any garbanzo or chickpeas. Then you're going to add... You're going to add... John, can you show us that? Because this, this camera's black, Ryan, and up, which is fine. No, that camera's not working, so oh, just go here. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, Thank just you. just any type of garbanzo bean, chickpeas, they're both the same. Uh, same idea. Um, next up, you're going to want a half cup of diced onions. Now, the easiest way to, to dice an onion is to cut it lengthwise along there, and then you just cut off the end. Get rid of the big one. And then thinly slice the onion as you go across and the reason you do it that way the reason you do that pre-cut is because it makes it a lot easier than then get it into a diced format and it doesn't have to be really small diced because you're going to throw it in the food processor anyway all right so we're going to take that half cup throw that in there there we go then we are going to do one teaspoon of minced garlic, which I did before just to kind of save some time. So there's some minced garlic going in there. Then we're going to do... How much uh, minced garlic? How was that? How much? About a teaspoon? Uh, yep. yep. One teaspoon of teaspoon. minced garlic. Then uh, we are going to do oh, half a cup of oats. Half a cup of rolled oats. Just plain old oats. Not cooked, right? Not cooked. Just right. right out of the box or can't canister or whatever you want to call it, tablespoon of nutritional yeast. Oh, eyeballing again. Yep. Oh, yeah. Well, if you ain't cooking if you're not eyeballing. Are you guys, are you like called ballers because you eyeball? Yeah, exactly. We're total ballers. We're total ballers. <laughs> uh, teaspoon of smoked paprika. Now, uh, if, you like, if you like smoked paprika, there's no harm. You know, that's the other thing. If you like a certain spice that you, that's in the recipe and you really want to have that, in, get that taste in there, Add a little more. What's it going to do, right? 
All right, and then uh, one teaspoon of onion powder. Oh, oh that's over here. So one teaspoon. Can you guys describe what smoked paprika tastes like? Oh, wow. Oh, it's smoky. Smoky. That's the thing. you got to get the smoked because paprika on its own is good, but smoked paprika really adds. Totally it. agree. Yeah. All right, and then we need uh, one tablespoon of flaxseed meal. Oh, flaxseed meal. This stuff's healthy. Yeah. Get well. your omega threes. <laughs> then uh, one tablespoon of any mustard. So we're just using regular yellow mustard here. But uh, in the ones I pre-made so we could show you what it looks like, I use stadium mustard, which there's a, a brand of stadium mustard here in Cleveland that is absolutely to die for. And, and what's it called? Fleischmann's? Or Fle yeah, there's, well, there's two. There's Fleischmann's and there's Ballpark. Oh, Ballpark. Yeah. And then, um, let's see, one tablespoon of low-sodium tamari. So That's different than soy sauce, right? A little bit different. A little bit different. And like Jane says, no dirty laundry, right? Is that what you said? That's <laughs> close enough. Which, what does that mean? That means I didn't dirty anything. I just used the cap for the bottle. All right. I think that is, that's everything. All right. Then we put this on. It goes the other way. Make it start. No, you're right. You had it. There. There we go. All right. So now this is going to blend for a little bit, and then we're going to stop it. And then do you have like a yep. tobo or something? That's good. All right. And then what you want to do is scrape down the sides a little bit because this is a little thicker. And actually, we probably need a little bit of water. Yeah, we'll just a yep. cup of water. No, you want to use the aquafaba. Oh, wait. Yeah, we'll use the aquafaba. See, we can use a little bit of that. We, we need some of it later. I'm going to use a little now just to kind of get a little get a little liquid in there. So you're not, you're not making a liquid here. You're just making it chunky, right? Correct. Yeah, and I'll show you what it looks like in a second. So it's, it's almost like a um, little thicker than what I'd call paste or a hummus yeah a little thicker than that because you'll see why in a second okay that should do it so if you can james you want to do that camera over there oh, yeah look at that so um, nice consistency on that yeah so okay. it's really it's really like a thick chunky hummus almost correct awesome. correct all right then you set yourself up if you want to grab that thing Brian. Now we need to do the put the breading on there. So you want to use parchment paper, or you can use a silk hat, like we're using here. The camera's working. Yep. Uh, which is just uh, helps with the cooking, so it doesn't stick. And then you want to get breadcrumbs. So we are using. Can we say the brand? Sure. Sure. Panko gluten-free breadcrumbs, and you're just going to put those in a bowl. I think that's enough. All right, then what you do is you take a little bit. Oh, we're palming it again. We're palming it again. A little bit in there. You dip it into the aquafaba. Can you show that to the camera a little closer? Brian? Sure. So it's just a, a looks like a little nugget, nugget, right? Yeah. And then you just put it in the breadcrumbs like that and then onto the silk hat. Oh, look at that. Can you see that Jane on that? Chicken nugget. Can you look camera 3? Yeah. So I probably in in all honesty I probably added a little too much aquafaba to the um to the mixture, but that's okay. So depending on how much how much breadcrumbs you want in there or how thick you want the breadcrumbs, you can pile it on. If you really want man if you really want manly nuggets, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so funny, manly nuggets. <laughs> if you really want manly nuggets, which which I prefer. There's not a guy out there that doesn't like manly nuggets. No. Well, <laughs> the kids should not be watching right now. But Oh, and take the blade out when you really start digging into the bowl. The <laughs> Otherwise, you'll have red chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah. All right. And so, um, so you just keep breading these up. And then, should I keep going? Sure. Yeah. All right. So you should make, what does it say, Brian? How many should it, does it say it make? But I'm making them bigger than it probably says. It says roughly 15 to 20. Okay, well, but we're not going to get 15 nuggets. to 20. No, but, but it says depending on size. And when you're making manly nuggets. <laughs> it's, see, do I, Brian, can you hold that with the camera? Because I, sure. I think my nugget making is top Jane, notch. can you do camera three? Camera three? Camera three. Can we go to camera and three? It looks yeah. like snowballs because they're so bright. <laughs> yeah. We talk about the color of the um, these these panko versus your panko, John, and what you use? Yeah, so I used a, a 
same uh, Panko brand name, but I use the whole wheat. Um, and so mine, and I'll show you, Brian, you want to show them the finished product? It's right over there. Sure. So I, mine came out a little brown. So when I first, when I first. Wait, we'll put them in the oven like we just cooked them, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cut. Oh. Look at those. Oh, my gosh. Look so that. that's the finished product. And so, um, again, mine, a little browner than James will probably, you know, these will come out because of the different uh, breadcrumbs. Okay. But I did do a test. So they were absolutely amazing. Someone so. called you the Nugget Master. The Nugget Ooh, Master. Ooh, yes, I am the <laughs> Nugget Master. Years of training. John, yours came out really, really well. What kind of shapes could you make of those nuggets? Oh, you, you want me to do shapes? Like a seahorse? A seahorse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to make a uh, circle. That's my first. <laughs> and then I'll probably make a square. Now, the other thing you'll notice as you get down here towards the bottom, the uh, breadcrumbs start to get a little chunky because of the, the aquafaba that's getting in there along with the, uh, the nuggets. But that's okay. Do your best, do your best to kind of coat them. Uh, your taste buds will thank you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I, I think I, oh, here, hey, how about this? You got one more? Oh, baby, I got one need more. Some more. Need some more breadcrumbs? Yeah, maybe more breadcrumbs. Look at this nugget. We'll call this the mother nugget. <laughs> or Papa Bear. Or Papa Bear nugget. Oh, oh boy, I, I don't think I have enough breadcrumbs for this last one. Uh -oh. I'm going to do my best. Hold on. Well, there's extra, there's extra there's never there's, say there's never. There's extras around the, the tray, it looks like. No, I got it. How long in the oven and at what temperature? Yep. How long do you cook them for, John? Whatever the book says. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the oven. It says 375. 20, 25 to 30 minutes. At 375. At 375. Yep. All right. So that is chicken nuggets. And again, it's the amazing part of the chicken nuggets is the fact that you can use almost any topping you want, right? It does not, you can be creative. There's lots of stuff out there. If you're buying a sauce, just make sure there's no oil in it and uh, make sure the sodium is pretty low. All we're, right. We're ketchup fans. Ketchup, yeah, ketchup, ketchup, there ketchup, you ketchup go. Um, barbecue sauce are great to dip them in. We uh, tested, test made them last night at our house and they were amazing. We all, we wolfed them down. We ate all of them. And again, Panko, we used the gluten free one. John used the whole wheat one. We try uh, to find a brand that. Yep. Awesome job, John. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. All right. Up stuff. next, let's keep moving here. That was fantastic. I'm already so hungry. Um, so, <laughs> can I just say that mac and cash smells amazing? It does smell amazing. Let's go back. Let's check on it. See how it's going. What? Put yours in. Oh, they are. They're in. Okay. It's toasting mm. up nicely. Oh, look at that. And the onions don't look too weird. <laughs> <laughs> what We'll make it work. What a knucklehead I am. All right. So uh, <laughs> next up is a painfully simple recipe. This is so simple. Um, it's actually sort of shockingly simple. And, um, and you will love it, I promise you. And it is as good, if not better, than a regular burger. Really? So you're not even going to thank me for cleaning as we go? Oh, I appreciate that, John. Of course, of course. <laughs> Um, so basically what I did was before we started filming, I took a nice big portobello mushroom. I don't know if Jane, if you want to catch it on the, we can do the other camera. Okay, three, three. Camera three. Camera three. Big portobello. Both sides of it? Yep. It's a big, it's uh, oh. I think that these were on sale for $2, two for $2, basically a dollar, a dollar a portobello. And, uh, we're going to, we, I cooked it gill side up. So all I did was put it in the oven, gill side up, and I just dumped um, barbecue sauce on it. Now we use this today. We use this rib rack barbecue sauce. Um, barbecue sauce. I know we're going to get an email or something in the chat about which barbecue sauces we like. Um, I happened to grab this. This one's got some sugar, some molasses, and some honey in it. Um, I know our vegan friends don't care for us using honey. Uh, you know, read the labels. Obviously, you don't want any of them with added oil, but they are going to have some sweetener. Jane, what's your favorite? I it, does, it varies to where we are. Bone sucking sauce. But we love has, bone sucking honey, sauce. It has honey, and we've yeah. tried to convince them to not use honey, and they're they say they're working on it. I don't know if that's <laughs> yeah. This one's brown sugar, tomato puree, distilled vinegar, molasses, 
cornstarch, salt, spices, dried onion, garlic powder. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So this is rib rack. And uh, all you do to, to cook this. Wait, before, you, before yeah. you go on, Brian, sorry to cut you off. No, not So uh, the other thing that, that we get asked a lot about is what about the barbecue sauces because the sodium levels are so high, right? Oh, They're right. over what, the, what, you know, we normally recommend. So just keep in mind that that's okay because it's really just a condiment and right. you're not going to drink the whole bottle. And when you balance it out with everything else Brian's going to add in there, the, the sodium content for the whole meal itself will be down below that level. Yeah, we just came actually quickly. We came across a, a company recently called True Made that often makes a no sugar added uh, barbecue sauce, but it still has a pretty high sodium, but not as high as this one. So, uh, again, yes, Jane. People have a question about the gills on the portobello and if you feel the need to pull them out. You know, we don't because this is um, manly recipes. <laughs> I can't wait to hear where this we is don't, going. We don't de-gill our, <laughs> our mushrooms, but it's an awesome question because some really like high-end foodie types will go in and actually I know people that I've worked with people that it will shave the top off the mushroom really? or de-gill them. Yeah. But in this case, you know, Fine. I like to, I like to think of Fine. Ann Esselstyn and the way she approaches the skins of sweet potatoes and whole potatoes is she just eats the whole thing, eat the skin. That's where all the vitamins are. <laughs> Um, so eat all the you, gills. All the gills, yeah. So all I'm gonna do, uh, and this is like almost like a joke, right? It's not even a recipe. Is I'm just gonna dump barbecue sauce on the top of this portobello. Um, Camera three. Camera yep. three. Look, <laughs> I just dump barbecue sauce on a portobello, and and what I'm gonna do is uh, I need I need to get a better tray because I have a bat. My tray is oh thank you. Um, so. Of course, I have my cooked one. I'm going to show you in a second. But all I would do is plop this on a tray, put it in the oven, and we cooked it before, Jane. Do you remember how long we cooked it for this afternoon? About 20 minutes. About 20, 25 minutes. Um, and this is what it looks like. We'll go, yeah, 375. 375. Here's camera three. You can see what it looks like. It shrinks quite a bit. Um, on the and it crisps. Like cow patty. Yeah, it looks kind of like a cow. Guys patty. don't like shrink it, but yeah. you can power through it. That is exactly right. And so um, I have my whole wheat, my 100% whole wheat bun. Now, of course, we're going to get something in the chat box about which buns we use. Um, we often, uh, if we can get them, we'll use Dave's Killer buns. Mm -hmm. uh, those tend to be pretty healthy. Um, this one is a, a brown berry, 100% whole wheat. It's not perfect. And so I was looking around today to try to find the right one, but um, that's usually what we get. And then there's the Ezekiel buns, and right? Food for life. What's that? Food for oh, life. Food for Life makes a great uh, bun that's that's compliant. So all I'm going to do is take this bun and then I'm going to get a spatula. And. Can we camera three? Yep, I'll camera three it. <laughs> this amazing portobello that's that's now it's candified with this amazing uh, barbecue amazing. sauce that's on there and it I'm just gonna plop that on there right. and then do what we should be doing with any kind of burger which is loading up all the fixings and, and remember if you think about it it's not the beef burger that that people tend to crave it's all the good toppings on right. top of it right so that's what it's all about so I've got yeah, how many people really eat a plain burger? I know. Or a plain steak. The white, yeah. the white bowl. What? The white bowl. Yeah. Oh. So how many people actually uh, actually you know would ever eat a plain burger? So all I'm doing here is just going with the tomato slices. Mm. Got two tomato slices. Then I've got greens, of course, because we want to get our greens in whenever we can. Load that sucker Load up. Load that with sucker green. up with greens. Yeah. There we go. And then I sauteed some mushrooms today. So mushroom gonna, on mushroom. Oh, uh, mushroom on mushroom. Absolutely. <laughs> mushrooms. I've got a red onion. Boy, I, may, I even forgot you had that mushroom burger down there. <laughs> and then I'm going to make this one a really good one. I actually have an avocado that I'm going to take a slice out of. Oh, boy. And put on the top there. Look at that. Never done an avocado like that. Oh, yeah. That's the quick that's, and easy that's way. That's the quick and easy way. Yeah. John, we don't like to wait. That's the thing about guys, our attention span. It's very short. Yeah, though. Then I've got ketchup, of course. Uh-huh. And the bun on top. <laughs> okay. Wait a second. Wait a second. I know we're all about manly eating, but go ahead. 
Go ahead, Brian. Get that in your mouth right now. I want to see it. No, we'll wait. We'll wait until the end. Well, Anne's going to come in here and, We're and half test and it. Both and yeah, we'll cut it in half, and we'll both have a bite at the end. Okay. So camera three. Woo-hoo! Uh, just in time. You're just in time for the tasting. <laughs> Can you get that on camera three, yeah. James? Look at that burger. Hey, we should do a cookbook, and that would be the cover photo. That would be the cover photo. Look at no, that. No, because I will have had a bite out of it by the time it gets there. Our spiritual leader, Ann Esselstyn, is here to... <laughs> Our taste to tester. mock us. Our taste testers in the house. All right, Brian, are we ready? We are ready for, for, the, the, for fit, the final the push. finale. The grand finale. And the great thing about this is, as we said earlier, you don't even have to cook it. Oh, that's what I love about damn good cookies. Oh, I'm going to learn how to use this thing sooner. Oh, later. yeah. Okay, go ahead. There, there we go. go. All right. Get the blade in there. All right. These are called damn good cookies, and they are freaking damn good. Woo! All right. So first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna take. Uh, gotta get the recipe. Well, I know <laughs> it. I know it pretty well. All right. We're going to take. Uh, so half, definitely a, a half a cup. Now we're doubling the recipe because I'm gonna eat half and then maybe share some with the rest of the <laughs> rest of everybody. So it's gonna be a total. Of, I'm gonna put in a total of two cups. So we're basically doubling the recipe. So this is a combination of. Walnuts, lots and lots of walnuts because of the omega-3. We've got a few cashews in here, and then looks like we put some pistachios I in did. There. I threw a handful of You are getting pistachio. fancy know, on me. I know. It's so good. <laughs> All right. So we put those in there. Then we're going to put the top on. Backwards. I, I always do that, don't I? Yeah, there you go. You got it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to go. Okay. There we go. There you go. All right, so I'm going to chop those up. All right. I think that's good. Yeah. All right. Now we just need a bowl to put these in. I think that's what this is. Yep. Okay. So now you're gonna you're gonna take this off and you're gonna put the nuts to the side. And you'll see why in a second. Oh, those pistachios look amazing in there. I don't think I've ever made this with with the uh, pistachios. Oh, it's gonna be so good. All right. Next up is again the recipe calls for six dates, but we are doubling it, so it's gonna be twelve dates. So the key to remember with dates is to take the pit out. And if you buy pitted dates, still make sure there's no pits in it because you will destroy your, your food processor. Jane it's- did that one time. She, <laughs> she put uh, the, the blade literally snapped. You didn't think you could break those things. <laughs> and then there's also sometimes a little cap on the end, so make sure you get that out of there too. So you're going to put the 12 dates in there, and then it's uh, where's where, uh, three tablespoons of oats. And that just kind of soaks up a little bit of the moisture, so you'll see what we do with that next. And then we're going to, I think, the, oh, vanilla. Don't forget the vanilla. And again, no dirty laundry. Yeah. So, no, we're just going to use the capful. And I like vanilla, so we're going to use, oh, wait, we should use two capsules anyway. That's right. I use one. four. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ann. I love how she thinks. All right, there we go. Four of the Woo! vanilla. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to blend this until it becomes a little bit of a paste. See how it's really bouncing around in there? All right. Yeah, a little scraper. A little scraper. Get it down off the sides. <laughs> so you want to make this kind of a, a, a you'll see that it starts to coagulate. <laughs> Again, not a great word, but it does coagulate. And then now you're gonna put your nut, your you're gonna put your chopped nuts back in there. That's a lot. All right. We do, we're not doing any dark chocolate, are we? Oh, yes, we are. Oh, we are? Where are those chocolate chips? We didn't chip? pull them out. Uh-oh. Be prepared. you got to have a chocolate chip trip. Oh, my God. These look so amazing. All right. All right. So this is becoming like a really thick paste. And I'll show you the consistency here in a second. Oh, it looks so good. So if you look. Show camera three. Camera three. Camera three. Wow. So it, it's it's. What about a little taste? Not yet. Uh, Easy. As we go along. <laughs> as we go along. All right. The next step is um, this is my favorite brand too. Enjoy life. Just put some chips in there. Now, once you put your chips in there, what does it say? Generous. Wow. Oh, there you go. Like a, oh, that's a lot. <laughs> huh? Oh, too many. I'm sorry. And these are enjoy life. Uh, 
Right, that's what we're talking about. All right, so don't do that too long. I'm going to do a little bit longer because you don't want to – you still want that. Hold on. There we go. You still want those chocolate chips to kind of be whole. There we go. Oh, my God. Okay. Now, the recipe says to roll them up into little balls so they become little, like, whoops, damn good cookies. So you can do that if you want. You can kind of just roll it or kind of put them all. You probably need a little more. Plate. All right. You can push them all together. And literally, they don't have to look pretty. <laughs> oh. They don't have to look pretty. It's like Brian and I. Okay. You guys look beautiful. Yeah. And and here you go, Ann. Here you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh. <laughs> Again, be careful with that blade in there. But the other thing is, is if you're really hungry and they look really good. They are good. Ooh. <laughs> Mm. This is doubled, the, right? What's that? It's doubled, right? This is the double recipe. So the, the regular recipe says it makes 20 teaspoon size. Well, we're not making teaspoon size with the plant bros. Because for plant bros like big nuggets of food. And big remember, if you're, a, um, if you're an endurance athlete and you're looking for, <laughs> if you're an endurance athlete and you're looking for um, something to carry when you're doing long events or long um, training runs, you know, maybe minus the chocolate chips, I would take like the, if you want to call them the nut clusters and, uh, and carry them with me in a plastic bag. And they're great. It's almost like an energy bar. Cause really it's just ground up. An nuts. energy ball. Why not? The an chips? energy ball. And I might do the chips. I just might, that might upset my stomach on the long run. I'm not sure though. And if you're not an endurance athlete, you can just walk around the house eating them. <laughs> yeah. Just... <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. So, so you guys I got to be... show my Let's do a review. All right. I got to do my, uh, I got to. Oh, yeah. Out. Let's check out your mac and cat. Check, check out that. Yeah, check out that. Yeah, put she has a flaxseed in here. Yeah, Why didn't we? Why not? You can. You can. Yeah. You could put flax. You could put chia. You could put butterscotch chips. Oh, no. That's not very vegan. <laughs> no, I know. It's good. All right. Oh, my God. Look at this. Whoa. Camera three. Camera three. Whoa. Look at that. Look at that. Toast wow. at the top. Oh, my Woo. God. Wow. 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 And hold on. We got to serve it. Not to steal a phrase, but eating good in the neighborhood, man. Look at that. So wow. this is what this is the way I would serve it. Is so I would. This is the way I would serve it. I would put a bed of greens down. If you go camera three, Jane. Oh my gosh, yeah. Put a bed of greens down because we always want to get our greens in whenever we can, and then. Because Popeye. Likes Popeye loves his greens, Brian. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, look oh, at that. Steaming up the camera. <laughs> look at that. Woo! Wow. Oh my god, Brian, that looks amazing. So, bed of greens, pasta with the cashew sauce, amazing. Up oh, and taking more. <laughs> All right, so let's review. So, we've got mac and cash. We've got our mac and cash. Um, oh, and just show them your nuggets. They were browning, actually, really nicely. Show them your I'm nuggets. I'm not going to show you my nuggets. <laughs> All right. Hold on. I don't want to burn my hand. Yeah. All right. I don't know if they're quite done yet, but they're, they're browning up. They're going to be blonding because of the rice. Right. So you can oh, see that they're, they're browning up. Yeah, they're big ones. Wow. <laughs> massive nuggets. <laughs> they're massive chicken, chicken nuggets. nuggets. Oh. Chick. Oh, check and nuts. Oh, you know what? Because your thing was up on top. Of the, on top, they weren't totally cooking oh, the top okay. of them. Okay, because it's getting blocked. Yeah. All right, so we've got mac and cash. Again, such an easy cashew sauce. I'll send out the recipe for the cashew sauce tomorrow because um, I know people will want it. Um, they we want got, all the recipes. It's all the I know. Say. And then the chicken <laughs> nuggets. Go ahead. Talk about those. Chicken nuggets. I'm telling you. Quick, easy, and the part I love is that all the different toppings, you can make them different every single time you make them. So make plenty of them in advance, and they just heat up really nice. Just kind of throw them in the oven for a little bit right before you eat them. we got to show the ones you brought. Those are, yeah. those are just gorgeous. So so these are these are the uh, the ones that we uh, popped out of the oven. So there you go. Thanks, Kyle. Oh, wow. All right. Look at that. And then, that, then what was next? Portobello burger. So that thing is go. just like, I tell you, as soon as the cameras go off, <laughs> Um, it's going to be a mad dash for that thing. It's going to be a mad dash for this thing. Can you cut that in half and show us like the profile? Like, oh, yeah. Sure, sure absolutely. That profile. Here you go. What is this? Sharp knife. It's going to ruin the, oh, that's true. the look. 
Yeah, we, we want to look like professionals. That's right. You know, that's my favorite meal, portobello burgers. Yeah. yeah. This looks amazing. Oh, my so God. So you can see from the, that. from the inside there, just oh, luscious. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Doesn't have ketchup on it yet, does it? No. Nope. Yep. Oh, yeah. I put a little bit of ketchup on it. Yeah, a little bit. It. And then and we closed we, it. We brought it home. Brought it home with the grand finale, and we're we're quickly running out of damn good cookies. <laughs> we making more. We got to. I can't. Them. I can't keep up with the crowd. <laughs> so, everybody, remember that um, you know cooking this way does not have to be difficult. It does not have to involve a lot of bizarre ingredients. It's just something. Um, if you take a little bit of extra, and guys time, can do it too. Guys can do it too. Um, and please, if you've got any uh, recalcitrant spouses or boyfriends wow. or significant others, wait, can we can we go back? <laughs> Could you define that for me? Recalcitrant, you know, like they're pushing against the rules. Got or, it. You know, they're not following the rules. Um, put them in touch with us. We'd love to talk to them. Uh, and remember, manly stuff like staying alive. <laughs> Uh, making sure that, you know, your body's functioning the way you want it to, being in shape, all those things are way more manly right, than being family, sick. Not being a burden. Yeah, you right. don't want to be a burden to your family as you get older. So with that said, that's – oh, sorry, Andrew. I just want to comment. Come in here. That I just ate dinner, <laughs> and I have now had two damn good cookies, damn good cookies and I'm about to have a chicken – this, <laughs> and I'm going to take the burger. <laughs> Is Essie going to get some of this too? No. <laughs> and by the way, you'll—we don't want to out Dr. Esselstyn, but you notice he's not part of Plant Bros. He's a part of Plant Bros. in spirit. In the morning. In the morning, but he's in the morning, but he's not a big cook. But he's getting there. He's getting making improvements. No, he's a good breakfast. He's cook. a good breakfast. Right. He, he makes good breakfast. Do they want to do a presentation about this? Or mind hiking your men men off? Yeah, where you can find it, right? Can um, it. So, how to get the men you love off of meat? Um, I don't think we actually have that online, no, yeah, but I'm happy to yeah. do it in the near future if people are yeah. interested in that. Yeah. Let me know in the chat box if you want me to do that talk, and I'm happy to do it. And how can they do this again? Um, so, tomorrow, uh, to everybody who signed up, I will send out a link to the recording. Uh, it's actually the same address as the one you're on right now, but I'll send it out anyway to make sure people. You can spread it far and wide and uh, send it to anybody, especially those men in your life that maybe need a little nudge. And don't tell them why you're sending it. Yeah. <laughs> Just say, hey, I saw these two goofy guys. You might get a kick out of it. All right. Well, thanks so much, John. All right. It's always a pleasure. Plant bros. Plant bros. <laughs> Woo there we go. Plant bros. Thanks, you guys. Okay, and